Mike Barilak here to entertain you, this time with a little bit of help from my father. Um, he's got a message that he uh, wants to share with the world, and um, we're, uh, uh, once he shares the message, we're going to see uh, you know, if uh, it gets any, of it, any attention out there in the, the, uh, in the world, because that's uh, where ultimately these videos get posted once, uh, once I'm done making them. But anyways, uh, <clears throat> we just want to see if uh, people agree with his message. I'm not sure what it is yet. He hasn't told me, but uh, <laughs> we're going to share some uh, uh, thoughts and opinions, and we want to see if uh, um, there are people out there that agree or disagree with my father's message. So take it away, Pops. <laughs> Hi, I'm Paul Parallack. I'll be 69 in two more months. And uh, around, uh, it's been 50 years since this country has been normal. And the reason why it's not and we're in the mess we are in today is because of greed. There's been so much greed. And a lot of it's because of the devil and the way that the society has been gone in the wrong direction. Back in 72 and 73, 1972 and 3, everything was fair. New cars were uh, your one-week check for the poor, middle class, and the rich. Everything was fair for all people. When children graduated high school, they were able to buy homes down the street from their parents. Homes were like in the 30s, 30,000, 35,000. All they needed was 3,000 down. They got homes by their parents. Teachers only made a dollar fifty, two dollars more than a factory worker. Uh, college was optional. Uh, Everybody got married after high school, had children, uh, people were picking carpenter songs, the carpenter songs for their weddings, uh, weddings were only a couple grand for the reception hall, things were normal, everybody was happy, we had no recessions or anything like that. Raises were only like, what, 10, 15 cents a year? You know, the cost of living? Everything was fine. Everybody was happy until they started this greed. And teachers, yes, they deserved a dollar or two more because there were uh, kids that, uh, how could you say, uh... The parents had, uh, how you say, uh, their children were a little smarter than the teachers, actually. Uh, they, uh, they had, uh, when I was in high school, they had, uh, had to have so many kids graduate or they didn't get money from the state. So, uh... I was a quiet kid in the background, you know, I didn't make no trouble because I was in bands and I had to, uh, at band practice after school. So uh, I was in rock bands, so I, I did all my work at school, all my homework and everything. So I was always quiet so I would get passing grades. But there were kids that would got trouble all the time, made trouble, throw spitballs at the teachers said the swear words to the teachers, uh, threw pennies at their heads. I mean, like, I had one teacher uh, was a counselor, and he took me out because uh, he said he was a nice guy. He took me out, and I went to other schools with him uh, And when I was in detention class, and uh, he used to let me smoke in his car. Uh, he took me to McDonald's. We had coffee. And I seen one day where a kid threw a penny at his eyeball, and he showed me up above his eye. He had an, a dent in his skin above his eyeball from the penny. 
And I told them, why didn't you smack them in the hand with the ruler? Because they used to be allowed to do that with the bad students until they had a PTA meeting. And the, ma the parents said, oh, you, we don't want them doing that to our child. And uh, they didn't consider the teachers. That, that that stuff can cause brain damage. The pennies are thrown at their heads and they could have get hit in the eye. So uh, I told my, my son uh, one week recently that, uh, that they should have had uh, back then where the officer was there and took them to jail. They considered the teacher safety. I'm throwing pennies at a, at a teacher like that. But they didn't do that back then. Or they were only concerned about the students. And they, gotta be, they should have been concerned about the teacher too. Because that can really hurt somebody throwing pennies at their head. You know, uh, they were immature back then. You know, always they were never concerned about the teacher. Yes, I think they should have got paid a little more. But then they started going on strikes every year, and everybody else started seeing that. And everybody else said, well, if they're going to get more money, we want more money too, just like how it was today. You see, it's all greed. Everybody wants more. Everybody wants to wet their beak. And that's the root of evil, money. And that's why we're in the mess we're in today. You see? And what does it say in the Bible? It doesn't say anything about money. It says love and children and family. Money is the root of evil and that's why we're in this mess. It's devil's crap. And that's why personally I don't go to church. Because these people pump their children to go to college and all this. College should be up to the children, not up to the parents to push that on them. Parents should be pushing love, family, and children, not money. And that's all I've got to say. And if you people agree with me, well, my son's here to say what he has to say. Thank you. Hit like and subscribe. <laughs> so, um, you heard the man. Um, <clears throat> there are some uh, finer points there that probably need a little more clarification. But uh, overall, uh, uh, what I gather from it is heaven on earth existed only between 1972 and 1973. And although you wouldn't get any argument from me that we're definitely living on hell on earth in today's world. Uh, whether or not uh, heaven on earth existed between 1972 and 1973 is still up for debate. <laughs> Mike Berlack. And I got one more thing to say. Okay, there's more, folks. Go ahead. And I think people should... Uh, when I was a kid, my mother took $30. We worked part-time job in high school, me and my sisters, and my mother took... $30 from us, and she said it was for doing clothes and washing clothes and board, but she didn't take the whole 30 She took 15 She made us sign a paper, and uh, we didn't know what that paper was, but it was $15 to put in a savings account, and that's how we had money to put down on our home and other things. You know, uh... The, uh, there was uh, a few bad parents back then, but not as much as today. Uh, I remember asking my friends, uh, I went out two days a week on the weekends, and I asked them, did your parents ever take you to your cousin's par birthdays? No. Did your parents ever take you to a movie or out for a pizza? No. Did your parents ever take you to the beach? No. Did your parents ever take you to amusement parks? No. Or carnivals? Or the zoo? No. And then I said, why did they have you? For uh, an award just to put on a bookshelf? Like a picture? And they said, yeah. 
I go, well, that's not what you take when you die. You take, I remember when little Johnny did this or little Marie did that. I remember when mom and dad did this. That's what you take with you when you die. <laughs> Memories. You know, th these people don't, don't know, don't teach their children nothing about love, about having kids or nothing, just about money, college. That's not how you raise a child. That's all. Good point. Um, I'd like to reiterate a little bit. Um, it's not always a question of good parents or bad parents. Sometimes uh, the parents got to work because the system is so messed up that a one in, you can't be a one-income family and support a family. Um, so, so the parents got to work, 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 and then the system ends up raising the kids, and now look what we got. <laughs> Would you agree with that? Yeah. <laughs> and another we found thing common too. ground. <laughs> and another thing, too. The government, this is supposed to be a free country. The government has no right to tell you how to raise your children, what they think. We vote for them to make things better for us, not to be your mother or your wife. They are, we vote for them the make the interest rates where everybody could afford a car, to make everything where our, where our children can buy a home. You know, not to be our mother and not to be our spouse. We vote for them to help us. We could raise our own children. This is a free country. That's it. Thank you. All right. <laughs> I think that's good for our first video. Uh, maybe we should make a follow-up video next week. What do you think? Yeah. We, should, we could do this, uh, make this a uh, regular thing here on the Mike Parallax YouTube channel. <laughs> All right. That'll be enough. Mike Parallax and, and, and father. <laughs> Thank you for your time.